Yo. Yo. What's good, bro? How you doing? It's been a while. Yeah, how you been? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. That's good. Can you hear can you hear me all right? There's uh some construction going on. Yeah, but... no, I think I think you're good. Are you in Philly uh, right now or are you back home? No, nah, I'm home. Okay. Yeah, same. Yeah, I just got I, I got back here like uh two days ago. Oh sweet. Yeah, bro. Sweet. Yeah, how's Los Angeles? Uh um, San Diego. Yeah. It's way, way different than here. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you that. It's, um, I'm, I honestly, I wish I was there just because of the weather. I mean, it's like 70 and like sunny there, bro. Like it's beautiful. But I just want to say thank you for hopping on with me. Um, you've been someone that I've been wanting to talk to. And I wish that we would have been able to schedule something like in person. But obviously because of COVID and everything, things are a lot different. But I would just love to start off, bro, with just like, how you been doing? Cause I know it's been a while since I've talked to you like personally, I know you're doing stuff with uh, eternal youth getting that ready. So really, how has that all been for you? Uh, it's been pretty good. Um, it's been a grind for sure. I've been uh, working on the reason why I haven't actually uh, posted anything yet is because I want, I want everything to be a f completely done before I, I say anything. Cause I don't <laughs> want there to be any delay. I want to have everything like backed up. Um, but yeah, I've been working on this video for like past month and a half. Um, it's different than what I've done so far. And I think it's new and um, something that people haven't really seen yet. So I'm, yeah. I'm excited to, to launch that. That's cool. Now tell me a little bit more about how like Eternal Youth started. Like what's the inspiration behind that? So the whole concept is childhood ambition. And I think it's something that we all have and it, it's something that's lost at some point. So like, um, for me, for example, like I always wanted to play baseball and I always thought I was going to play baseball my entire life until, um, middle of high school where, um, you know, you start to realize that things get put into perspective and goals change. And, yeah. um, yeah, so like the whole thing is just, is, that childhood ambition quality um, to maintain that throughout your entire life, no matter what it is. That's cool. Now, where, because I think on the Instagram page, it says in the bio, dare to disobey. And I thought that was pretty much telling about kind of your work in general, because you do so much different stuff. So why, why did you decide to take that approach? So it's something that I kind of always remind myself and think about um it's like daring to to do something different um than the rest because like you know throughout high school I got a lot of crap for different stuff that I did that because kids weren't doing like I, the I started the clothing company back in uh sophomore year and kids were making fun of it and stuff and it wasn't really it, I don't know they, it was just different than what everybody else was doing and, yeah. Um, I feel like I was always different from what everybody else is doing. So yeah, that's daring to disobey from, from the norm. Yeah. Now what are like, what are your goals like coming into it? Cause obviously you haven't really released uh, anything yet, but it kind of seems to me that like it can be more than just a clothing brand. It can kind of be like, kind of like a community of some aspect. So kind of ha is, has, has it been important for you to not limit the uh, thing you're creating and like about your work? Yeah, man, that's, that's, per that's well said. Um, <laughs> I've been thinking about that a lot and I've been talking to my, my dad's a big like mentor of mine. Um, yeah. He's a very creative guy and we talked to him about, about a lot of stuff and um, yeah, it's just, I don't want to be limited to one aspect of art. I think there's so many different types of art and I want to be able to express that uh, through this, this thing. And my passion is like i want to be able to put all of that into clothes excuse me clothing yeah and um but what's different about this line is i want it to be um a uh, higher quality um luxury more luxurious type of streetwear that's also artwear mm -hmm. that's something that i think is not um it it need like there needs to be more of it people yeah. just putting their art onto clothing and uh that's the that's the main goal of that. 
Now, when did you get into streetwear? Because I feel like, I mean, when we first met, you were more into like videography and photography. When did uh, getting into fashion become a thing for you? So like, I always kind of um, have enjoyed it and like have always kind of had ideas and designs for stuff, but I yeah. never would like outwardly express them and I never really dressed a certain way. And going to Temple allowed me to really? step out of that comfort zone. Yeah, because like being in the city, like like where we're from, like people don't wear like crazy stuff. People yeah, don't. That's people don't sure. ex like, it, you know what I mean? Like it's a it's very cut and dry of what people wear. And I like I think being able to express yourself like like that's a one way like to express yourself before you even meet somebody. Like they look yeah. at you and say like, see what you're wearing. And that like kind of like shows like who you are. Like you can read a lot by what a person wears. So yeah, yeah, that's that's where that passion comes from. Now, where did your like when did creativity like come into your life? Because obviously, um, like you've shot a video for me, and we collaborate on something amazing. Right when like Color House was just first developing, and then you're into photography a little. But when did like your whole creative journey start for you? So it actually started really, really young. Um, really? Like I said, my dad is a, a graphic artist. And so um, art has always been a big part of my life. But like, I never really, like, I kind of like lost sight of it for a while. And um, like I said, when I was younger, we were always doing different arts and crafts and stuff. And I always was drawing growing up. But like, I never like took it seriously. Um, yeah. And it wasn't until like senior year of high school where because like all throughout high school I tried to take the hardest classes possible I took everything I could because like I don't know I didn't know what I wanted to do yeah <laughs> and I didn't think I could do something creative which I don't know why it was just always instilled in me from from the high school that like I needed to do something in, in science or math and I'm not saying that that's it like don't do that but for me personally like I just I didn't want like that cut and dry like yeah. I want to be able to oh yeah for sure be creative and so senior year for sure because I started taking a couple art classes and then I started drawing a lot more and then um the past year I just started drawing a lot like and I took um uh, I was in Tyler for the spring semester undecided so I was taking a bunch of art classes and just really started to love it and like realizing that there's so many different types of art forms like I said like yeah. it doesn't really matter what it is but yeah yeah how, how are you been able to manage to tie in all your creative abilities? Cause I kind of see myself in you. Cause like, we don't really want to limit what we're doing. Like for example, like color house is kind of like a, like a whole aesthetic of what eternal youth is trying to become. But how have you really managed to like keep everything together by not like, just be focused on one art form? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, so that's like, it's it's really difficult because yeah. I'm very scattered and like like I like jump to things very quickly like if I see something I like I'm very impulsive like if I see something that I like I jump to it um and it's hard to stay focused sometimes and actually my dad's been big off of that so he's just he like with this thing I'm working on he's he told me he's like you just gotta sit down finish it and then you can move on to the next the next thing and um yeah it's been it's it's hard for me personally but uh just doing time management has been big for sure because like in a day like you have so much time and especially with quarantine like okay if I want to work on uh charcoal drawing then I do that for a period of time and then if I want to work on drawing on my iPad then I do that for a certain period of time it's just about time management really yeah and I saw um a few months ago you um well i obviously know about your story with journey boys fitness and everything but i saw that you really got more into fitness and you were showcasing that more on instagram was that really did fitness impact your creativity at all and what kind of outlet has that been for you yeah so i i don't know it's like one of those things again where i like i get in these like moods where like i want to like work on something a lot more and um i'm not really doing anything with that right now yeah. but um yeah it's just like I don't know I just I finally got I was in a I put on a lot of weight in freshman year from college <laughs> so did I, then, bro. I feel like everyone does, <laughs> everyone yeah. does. I, I it was crazy that I put on like 35 pounds so I, I just like 
I don't know. It, and then the whole thing came about to be like this journey of 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 all of us losing weight and and not even that, just like the journey of of us being friends and everything. And yeah, that's kind of where that came from. Um, but I definitely want to want my audience on Instagram. Like I want to build and be able to build an audience, and I want that audience to be a more creative audience. Um, not that I don't want it. Uh, don't want to like move away from fitness but um i want people to see that other side of me okay gotcha now yeah. how is your because obviously I, i'm in school as well too but you're um you're in art school but does that really interfere or does that influence your creative work individually um so this past semester it's been tough because i have a couple of gen eds still like i'm taking um to environmental science classes and so it's not everything that I like want to be doing necessarily mm -hmm. um but no it definitely adds to it like um my f film classes are huge for that because the whole thing with like eternal youth is I want to every um collection has got to tell a story and so being able to enhance that s storytelling aspect through classes and stuff is definitely huge yeah now with eternal youth though um because you say you want to tell stories what what type of stories are you are you looking to tell that you really haven't seen much of in a world with just so much creativity in it yeah that's that's a good that's a good one too um hey man uh, i'm hitting it i'm hitting it yeah <laughs> um i have a notebook that i write down a lot of my ideas and, and stuff that that comes to me and I mean some of the stuff might not be new to the world but it's new to how I'm presenting it okay. and the designs that are are gonna be shown um things like I'm trying to do like like that's what makes each artist special you know what I mean like we all have a different um pers perspective of of different things and how we yeah. um like that's what's that's where originality comes from you know so like mm -hmm. it's gonna be de depend like it's through my eyes basically okay how i see the how i see things yeah now with eternal youth though are you is everything influenced from your experiences like what you experience like yourself or are you trying to kind of like not really uh, reach that point and being able to tell your own stories or is it the opinions of others that are shaping really what you're telling? Um, well, I try not to, I, like, it's through my eyes, but it's also, I feel like, through a relatable sense, if that makes sense. So, like, okay. if the way I see something can be seen, like, I want it to be, like, okay, so here's, like, the center thing, like, the, the main thing, like, what I see. Yeah. It is allowed to be seen from different perspectives you know people can like absolutely feel however they want about it i just the whole thing like with creation and art it, it's got to make you feel some type of way and i want like that's really like the goal is to just evoke evoke feeling and i think like that's what a lot of artists goal is just to create something that makes people feel some type of way okay got you and and you and you are trying to make them feel like the like the childlike sense that we lost in our lives yes yeah that's perfect for the first collection at least but that's like the underlying message of the company yeah gotcha i love that now really how has your creative process been like through like obviously you're saying you're writing all the time and i do that too and it's really a great way to influence creativity but when you're really sitting down and coming with the designs are you looking at other uh, artists creators how do you really spark that little light in your head yeah, absolutely. Um, my one friend uh, from Temple uh, told me that she draws a lot of interest from, uh, or gets a lot of ideas from Pinterest, actually. No, and I use so, Pinterest all the time. <laughs> I started going through that more and, like, just seeing different stuff on Instagram. Like, Instagram's huge. I have, on my art account, I only follow artists and, like, kind of, like, weird things. So I try to stay see like what people like what trends are what people are into mm -hmm. and then also like pulling that from like everyday life so like like a big thing is like is like how i feel like 
like if I like because art a lot of times artists will put their how they feel into their art it's it goes like if I'm feeling a certain way that you're gonna see that through the designs basically yeah. are you but, getting uh, yeah definitely Instagram yeah are you getting any inspiration from like musicians or like artists you listen to because that's really a big thing for me is when I see like uh, like the weekends music videos and we always talk about music videos in the past but like are you really getting any inspiration from that yeah definitely um i i listen to music non-stop and i'm i, yeah. I uh one thing i do a lot when i'm drawing or, or uh animating i listen to I have podcasts playing in the background so like i watch um there's a series i really like uh called blueprint that complex does blueprint. um and yeah, you gotta check it out. They it's like basically like I gotta write these, that down. Uh yeah. Um all of these like people in the in the um fashion industry, hip hop industry, um and it's like their blueprint of like how they got it's basically them summing up their how they got to where they are in like forty minutes. Really? It's, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um so that's something where I get a lot of um ideas from and um because like i said a lot of them are it's intertwined with music and old hip-hop and it's like that's something that i've been trying to um understand and learn more about is like old 80s 90s hip-hop and yeah. stuff like that but I, like that. I also like um do you know what pinup art is have you ever heard of that i think i've heard of it before i had um i had some friend that was telling me about it but i didn't really consider it it's pinup art is like the old ads, like the painted, um, the old ads from like the vintage ads from like the fifties and sixties. I look through a lot of those, um, find good inspiration there. Um, definitely through music though. Cause like music, like I said, it's the same thing. Like music evokes a certain feeling. So you're going to create or, or put whatever into something depending on how something else makes you feel. Yeah. It it seems from what you're saying like you like to br you like you you're aspiring to bring back a lot of like old vintage, uh, like not trends but like kind of aesthetics that haven't really been seen at all. Do you get any inspiration from like the new trends or the new really things in creativity that people tend to sometimes stay away from? Yeah, like I I see a lot of these um, big companies that are doing stuff. They're bringing back a lot of styles from the eighty seven yeah. or the eighties and nineties and like they even say themselves like like I'll, the reason why they're recreating it is because um it's something that made them feel a certain way and they want to re evoke that feeling that they once felt and it's like more about that feeling for them than actually selling the piece or whatever so um each like i said like i already said before the, yeah. each collection's got to make you feel a, t a certain type of way and that's like the whole the whole goal behind that yeah from the from the outside obviously you've told me that you're taking your time with this and you really want to make sure everything's completed and i know i struggle with that too but like has it been difficult to really like stay patient with yourself knowing that like oh yeah all stuff to get rid of oh yeah absolutely <laughs> um because i i have like i said i have the design the designs and everything done for the first uh for the first piece and i just want that out i just yeah. want to be able to sell it but I know that the reason that it's going to be the re like, it's going to, it's got to be different in that it, it, it's like this entire creative like wave. You okay. know what I mean? So like the storytelling and stuff has got to be perfect for me. Like everything's got to be together before that piece is out. Yeah. Now what have you had to tell yourself though? When like you're telling yourself not to rush, be patient, like how, how have you really dealt with that? Yeah, it's it's hard. Um, <laughs> honestly, just working working hard and um, hard, like hard and almost fast because like I try to keep a good pace to everything that I'm doing without rushing. Yeah. Um, I like to work quick, so mm -hmm. it's about pacing that as well as like finding that right balance between not working too fast and and putting something out that you're not happy with mm -hmm. and like I feel like in in previous like videos and stuff I've done I I wish I would have maybe planned a little bit more in advance for it and then because like you know I hate that feeling where 
afterwards like you see something you're like oh I could have changed that or something yeah. like, like and you catch it later on like maybe if I just would have waited a bit you know like so it's it's kind of like from learning from past experiences yeah and I know a lot of artists especially me too you might be describing this but it's really just being hard on yourself and I've really been able to I've been trying to teach myself to like let myself loose a little but do you struggle with that really like just being always hard on yourself telling yourself to get this done get this done is that something you struggle with oh yeah uh, all the time like I, I hate that like there's sometimes like literally the other night I would like laid in bed for an hour and a half thinking about like I just couldn't go to sleep because I just was like I should have got like I should have gotten this done I gotta get this done like yeah, just thinking about everything you just gotta take like 20 seconds to remind yourself like it is there's a whole process it's not just you can't just like it's not like you just snap your fingers and it's all done so it, it takes everything takes time and it's just taking a step back and realizing that you there is a thing like i said things take time you just got to be patient yeah and the the hard thing about creativity too is like i've talked to people that like they try to plan out creativity like kind of what you're saying like organize it a specific time and then there's other people that just wait to get inspired are you the type to wait to get inspired or are you always trying to plan creativity and organize around it so i don't think i necessarily plan it um but one thing that i that tyler the creator said that i i found and i took and i kind of like agree with and it's something that i do with myself like with his music with songs like um he'll write something and have something down or, or maybe it was an tyler creator I don't know who it was, but they, once they have, <laughs> once they have that idea for something, they write like little notes f next to it of, of that feeling that it evoked. And then okay. that, that like sparks that, that idea that you had. So like, okay, like, let's say like I'm walking down the street and something like I get an idea for something. Well, that feeling that, that just, that, that I just got from that, I'll like write down ideas of of why I felt that way and like so I can come back to it and and like pick up where I left yeah. off without losing track of what I'm doing right now yeah you know what I mean I like that I really I like that a lot actually how has the um this past year especially during the pandemic what have you really learned about creativity that um it's not limited to like no matter what your surroundings are, you can still be creative. Like, even though it, it's tough and like people say like that they feel less creative. Like, I don't know. I felt, I felt more creative than ever. Like it, it's just, it's been time where people that aren't working, you know, like working as in like working on their craft or whatever. Yeah. Um, the people that aren't doing that and saying like, Oh, this sucks. Like complaining and like, and like pitying themselves. It's like, well, there's all this time to work, you know what I mean? Like I'm trying to take advantage of that and, and, and work on stuff, work on myself and, and these things that I want to do. Yeah. Well, that's really been the, the hardest thing really is because, um, so people have so much time to themselves and being alone with their thoughts and their just really themselves and not a lot of people really have that time. So sometimes like you get scared uh, from those thoughts that you have is that something that you struggle with a little that you've really been and also does that impact how you've been creative at all yeah I mean I think everybody definitely has like it's it's different it's like it's 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 hard sometimes you know like, like especially like yeah living at like for me and you or I don't know I'm not sure if you can relate because you've been <laughs> fortunate enough to travel around and stuff but um I like tried to being, travel around yeah um <laughs> being being home like this is the longest i've ever been home like same yeah. with everybody else but like a lot of my friend friends have gone back to school and like i've been home basically since uh march you know what i mean like i haven't really gone yeah. anywhere i haven't really done much so it's like yeah it's hard but like at the same time i just it's staying keep, keep focusing on my work has kept me um sane <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what i mean it's a great word for it yeah but have you have you really had those times where because like obviously in the beginning we were all like oh i'm gonna get this done i'm gonna get this done i have so much time to myself but then after a while 
you keep going through the same process, the same habits, the same day to day schedule. Was that something that you had to overcome at all? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, th there was a week um, after, so I was working, I was lifeguarding over the summer. Um, so that was, like, new and different, because, like, that kept me busy. Mm -hmm. um, and I was drawing at work. So, like, I was able to, thankfully, work on everything and, and stuff. And so, like, I started quarantining off, like, working out and stuff and working out really hard. And I kind of, like, slowed that down a little bit <laughs> and that, as I was working. And then when the summer ended, I feel like that summertime uh, – sadness i'll call it like yeah. you know like everybody everybody does that when the especially like knowing like man it's the nice weather is gonna end and now we're actually gonna be stuck inside and can't <laughs> can't <laughs> can't do anything like like yeah that sucked for sure like definitely drained me yeah but yeah i mean i got through it like there was a solid week where i didn't feel creative or i didn't really want to you know i didn't really want to do much school i don't think school had started up yet so like i was like it was like the week before school, my friends had all gone back and, you know, it was just, it was me, like, it was like reality hitting, like, yeah, like everything kind of sucks right now, but then you just make the most of it and, and keep pushing. Yeah. And with saying that though, like obviously through this year, what have you learned the most, like the biggest lesson that you've taken away that will really influence your work and eternal youth going forward to the new year? Um is to take risks um because like you don't know like you don't know what's gonna what's gonna happen like um with this pandemic like a year ago you know we had no i had no idea like i look you know you get your snapchat memories from a year ago oh thinking, man like, it's damn. Sad. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like damn that's what i was doing and then and then now it's like man like you can't do any of that and i don't know like i i just yeah like i said uh taking risks and because like who knows if this this might have this could happen again you know yeah. you don't know oh yeah for sure how have you been able to take risks though um so like i said i've had this idea of eternal youth for a while and i haven't actually acted upon it until quarantine really like yeah. it, it gave me time where like i had no excuses like i had nothing else going on where like if I don't do this now, then what am I ever going to do it? If I just keep talking about it, you know, I can't just keep talking about something and not act upon it. So yeah. that was, that was good. From, from working on, obviously we worked on like a video, like a, her way back. And I, I've seen that like you've evolved so much in, since then, but where do you think you individually have evolved the most since that time? Um, definitely um picking up different art forms like um back when i don't think that was was that fall of last year i think so yeah winter Crazy, yeah so like that was forever yeah that was before i was like in i was still in business school and i wasn't really you know i wasn't really too happy with what i was doing and it was i was i wouldn't say i was like less creative but i was definitely um i had like a like a dome over me you know I couldn't yeah. like move like like I felt restricted like being in the business school because like it wasn't what I wanted to do I wasn't happy so going to the art school like and seeing different things is it realized it made me realize that I can do whatever I wanted there's no restrictions is that the really the biggest thing you've taken upon really that's changed your mindset too how has your mindset shifted um well I've always felt that way that there's no restrictions it's just that like I almost got I almost let myself get stuck because uh, like you hear a lot of people talk about like going to college for a period of time and then they're just like like man they're miserable like, you know they're working yeah. a job that they hate and so I, I've always felt that way and I always and then I just decided I was like you know I'm just gonna take the leap I'm just gonna go to film school you know it's like it was, it's what makes me happiest um I feel I feel the best there and but yeah that's definitely where I don't know if I'd say I yeah i guess i got older and i realized like i want to be happy with what i'm doing yeah no same I've, I've been through the same thing but i mean like at a young age like us uh especially going through high school like you talked about a little like how like you always hear the opinions of others and when you make such a big change like you did from going to business school to art school was that something you, that ever really got into your head just considering what other people might think might say has that something you struggle with 
Um, yeah, I mean, maybe some of my some of my closer friends, I they may have, I don't know. They were pretty much, for the most part, supportive about it. I didn't really have anybody that like wasn't supportive about it. I mean, like when I, sometimes like when I tell people like oh like like I'm in film school, like I feel um, I don't know. I almost feel like I don't want to say guilty, but like really? I feel yeah because like I don't know. Like I feel like I. I'm doing something that other people aren't doing and I don't know if it if it like genuinely like do they want to go to school and become a, a a nurse like is that what makes them happy or is there something else that they wish they're doing you know, I don't really it's like I feel like like I wish that other people could take that step to do what they actually want to do you know yeah I got you really just not being afraid of fear honestly yeah so I give you yeah credit that's that. yeah thank you and and like that's something that like I definitely have struggled with is like the fear of failure and I think that's definitely a slight reason why like I haven't done more with certain things like you know you just you don't want to like you want like like that um perfectionist mentality of being perfect and doing everything exactly the right way and then having that fear of failure so it's like it's like but then if you ever act upon it then nothing will ever happen so it's kind of like gotta be a a combination of, of everything you know yeah would you consider yourself a perfectionist um to some degree because like i i like to make like in certain things like things that i'm most passionate about like yeah, yeah. I, I want to be perfect but like i don't know sometimes with school like in certain classes like i just you know you start to like not care as much i don't yeah. know it definitely definitely it depends on what it is gotcha now, obviously, you're getting ready to set your first, uh, drop your first collection with Eternal Youth, but I'm curious to know, do you have any goals going forward before you drop everything? Do you have any expectations for yourself? Um, no, not really, to be honest. I don't know what to expect. That's I, good. It's kind of like, it's kind of a vulnerable thing, too, like, a little bit, because, like, it's, whenever you're putting your art on something, like, you want people to like it, and if they don't, like, That's you're going to... I don't know, you feel, you don't want to feel like people don't like what you're doing. And, you know, like I, I've already told, like, I already <laughs> have kind of gathered multiple collections for the future. Cause like, you know, I don't want this to be like, okay, let's say even if it does really, if it doesn't do really well the first time, then like, I still got more in the tank, you know, I just, I don't want it to be like a one and done type thing. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing really is just to be able to enjoy the process you know, yeah. a lot of people really, I mean, me especially too, like I release something and like literally no one will see it. And I'm just like, damn, I guess I should delete it now. <laughs> but you really just got to be able to just enjoy it, man. So that's probably the one thing I would tell you to do and just love what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. We were, we were talking the other day and saying over text saying like, as long as you're happy with what you're doing, it doesn't matter. And like, that's something like, that's like a mean message of, of the brand, you know, and um but regardless of that like everybody's gotta gotta make themselves happy at some absolutely point. and yeah man like like we're just talking like we're both really perfectionists and we're always we're obviously really hard on ourselves and that that really takes an impact creatively so just being able yeah. to enjoy what you're doing man that's the one thing i would say but we've come to the end of the interview i like to finish up with two questions i i ask everyone and i feel like you would gonna provide an amazing insight on both of them but uh, first one, though, is what is one creative tip you could give to someone based on what you've been through this past year and obviously with Eternal Youth coming up? What's one tip you could give any creator? Um, don't think inside of a box. Um, I know it's kind of yeah. a cliche, but but um, like if you get an idea for something, just write it down. Like like the something that people don't like that instantly that we all do is we get an idea for something and we say like that's stupid and like that is the worst possible thing to do and like that is something that's really important to me yes like no <laughs> no matter how dumb the idea is write it down and then you know if it's still not like you come back to it and it's still like dumb in your eyes then you know like let it evolve and and you know don't don't be hard on yourself you know, don't, yeah. don't say that your ideas are dumb because they're not. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. But last question though, what is your definition of creativity? 
Um, hmm, that's a good one. <laughs> everyone. I, get, I stopped everyone with this one, man. <laughs> My definition of creativity is being able to express yourself. Is expression. For I like that. Nice, simple answer, yeah. I like that. Well, thank you so much, man. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And I just, I, I love how um, insightful you are. And you're always really bringing new perspectives that I never really thought but I just want to say thank you, bro, for everything you've done. Obviously, you've been such a big support for me. And I'm, I'm really, I'm very excited to see what Eternal Youth turns into because I know you've really been taking your time with it. So, yeah, well thank you. Me. I really, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Sounds good. See you, bro. See ya.